Very good afternoon, everybody. Thanks for joining us on this webinar on Innovate, Design and Build in Microsoft Azure Serverless. I have Nishant Prabhakaran, my uh, colleague or product consultant of Serverless 360. And I am Erdla Rasisarian, the lead product consultant of Serverless 360. It gives us immense pleasure to join you all in this session. So let us begin the session with an interactive poll. Uh, so ourselves as product consultant, we have been working with uh, industry experts who work on Azure um, strategy for organizations across the world. And we have observed that a number of organizations who have either adopted to their uh, cloud strategy or they have taken up cloud strategy as one of their priority items. And there are a number of reasons why this has been prioritized. I would like to understand from the participants here, um, like what were all the reasons in your organizations why cloud strategy is a priority? We would like to understand if our learning is in coordination with your scenario or not. So to explain these observations we have made, uh, we have found that um, like investing, the organizations who have physical data center are expected to do uh, invest an upfront cost on their uh, business infrastructure. Whereas adapting to cloud architecture or cloud strategy can bring in a considerable elimination on the upfront cost. So this is one reason many organizations choose to um, go ahead with their cloud strategy. Flexibility, say I considering current scenarios wherein people are uh, required to work from anywhere, if when my organization infrastructure is in cloud, I find it really flexible. I can enable my employees to work from anywhere. Scalability, yeah. So business is not the same every day isn't it one day i might want to scale up or i need to downsize my business application so when it is in cloud uh, it, it's quite flexible for me to scale up or down seamlessly any cloud service provider helps me or enable me to downsize or uh, um, scale up on my azure infrastructure without any challenge and data security, though organizations were concerned about security of data in the cloud early, at the early stages, now we are quite confident because every cloud service provider ensures the data that we deal with are uh, highly secure. Yes, I have got 75 percentage of the participants responding to the poll. That's pretty good and we are happy to see that uh, most of them have selected one among the four reasons that has been spotted here. Thank you so much. That's wonderful interaction to begin with. And let us now get into, I'm closing the poll now. Thanks for your response. Let's now get into the actual benefits of adopting to Microsoft Azure. So we generally, in, in general, talked about uh, how organizations um, prioritize cloud strategy as um, an important uh, <coughs> milestone. So here are some top benefits that are, that are worth discussing in this session as we proceed further. What, how, uh, how, how can I be benefited by adopting to Microsoft Azure? So business needs change over time, right? Whether for growth or downsizing, which makes scalability as one of the core concerns of my any infrastructure related investment. Um, Microsoft Azure's public cloud framework allows organizations to increase their storage space and computing power on demand, ensuring maximum capacity during short term bursts of traffic and long term expansion projects. So Azure was designed to scale alongside businesses, uh, meaning users can adjust their service agreements to prevent disruption of their high load applications. 
and I pretty much do not need any on-site hardware requirement. So owning and operating on-premise data storage equipment comes with high upfront cost, isn't it? And consistent overhead, which can eat into the company's IT budget. By moving their data applications and computing processes to the cloud, organizations can essentially eliminate the need of on-site hardware. So businesses looking to keep some of their processes on private servers, um, whether due to convenience or compliance issues, can build hybrid cloud environment using Azure's advanced networking features. So that is even possible. Cost-effective subscription models. Microsoft Azure's consumption-based pricing structure allows small businesses and large enterprises to build and manage their IT budgets and leverage the exact cloud features they need. So this usage-based model is highly effective for decreasing infrastructure costs and reducing the burden placed on in-house IT management and streamlining the cross-departmental workflows. If any issues arise, users are backed up by Microsoft's extensive knowledge base and 24-hour support team. Unlike many competing cloud service vendors, Microsoft Azure provides a high availability and redundancy across all of its data centers. The tech giant operates in 55 regions worldwide and is available in 140 countries, making Azure well-suited to companies with global reach. Because of this massive presence, Microsoft Suite is able to offer a service level agreement that ensures 99.9% .9 availability, which amounts to around 4.5 hours of downtime per year. And with Microsoft Azure, organizations can build, deploy, and manage their own custom web apps using a variety of popular tools and programming languages, including .NET, Java, Python, Kubernetes, and much more. This, flexible and will, this flexibility will enable users to create next generation apps for webs and mobile devices, while also utilizing a host of management resources from container orchestration to automatic updates. Additionally, um, <clears throat> Azure's end-to-end -end development platform features, dedicated testing environments can help your companies um, improve your customer-facing experiences. All data stored on Azure is protected by an advanced encryption process, and Microsoft data centers are outfitted with two-tier authentication, proxy CAD access readers, and even biometric sensors. When paired with your existing cybersecurity system and policies, Azure built-in security tools can help maintain the privacy, integrity, and availability of sensitive customer information. So though it's multi-layered security model, um, Microsoft helps companies ward off data breaches, malware, DOS attacks, and other evolving threats. So you can be rest assured about the security of your uh, data when it resides in Microsoft Azure. So over the years, Microsoft has become quite familiar with the, the need of strong and active compliance controls. That's why Azure offers more than 35 compliance offerings specific to the needs of key industries, including healthcare, government, finance, education, manufacturing, and much more. So though it's built-in compliance tools, configuration management features, and <clears throat> guidance resources, um, Microsoft helps organizations keep pace with the evolving strategies, regulatory guidelines like HIPAA, ISO, GDPR, and more. So you can take full advantage of Microsoft Azure and its expanding suite on on-demand services. Um, so it's, it's a uh, safe choice for us to move our applications to Microsoft Azure. So in today's discussion, let us pick up one of our very familiar scenarios. So this is a uh, customer scenario wherein they are a uh, largest shipping or vehicle management uh, company wherein they had certain business requirements that we would like to uh, demonstrate to you. How did they achieve building 
such a smart vehicle telematic and booking application with the help of Microsoft Azure. So here were uh, certain key business requirements that we could understand from our customers. They wanted a real-time vehicle tracking application, asset tracking, route optimization, fuel consumption tracking, and improved operational efficiency. Um, their, their fleet systems were spread across the world and they wanted client compliance, verification, automated trip logging. The typical fleet management systems requirements were all part of their business needs. So when um, this has to be investigated deeper to understand the technical requirements, this would involve components installed on uh, telematic devices installed on uh, cabs or vehicles or fleets across the world. So there could be in millions of events triggered from these telematic devices deployed on the um, vehicles every minute. So I need a component and service in Azure that's going to help me in just millions of events. I need a reliable storage for this telematic data. Um, I, I would like to prefer an event-driven architecture because I want the application to be real-time, reacting to the customer needs, reacting to the real-time scenarios. So, and uh, it is also necessary for me to uh, retain my core business logic on premise because I have an existing application running on premise which uh, needs to interact with the other components that are, that are going to reside in my um, Azure subscription. But I would prefer to retain and reuse the core business logic on the on-premise application itself. And when it comes to the customer interaction, I need to provide them a user-friendly web interface through which they can accept booking requirements and that needs to be processed using components in my Azure subscription. The most reliable way with um, high-end security assurance and high performance. Most importantly, I need this application to demand on scale, scale on demand. So here I have a need for Azure Com cloud services that could help me meet these requirements. So ingesting the millions of events, yes, I have Event Hub that has been designed and cubed to handle millions of events per second. So, uh, and this has to be reliably stored in my Azure storage account. And this event hub has to enable me store my collected ingested events into my storage account. I need to, I prefer an event driven architecture and here comes need for my event grid. I have my core business logic in on-premise. Uh, so that needs to be exposed or connected to my cloud services using an relay. The booking application in turn needs a web interface, which I consume in web app. I have a logic app, which does all the workflow definition for me. And I have queue that efficiently decouples my website and my backend booking processor. I fulfill my computational requirements using my function app. So all the technical requirements can be fulfilled with the help of Azure offered cloud services is what my initial analysis derives me to. And now I'm going to take help from my colleague Nishant to help me innovate, design, and build this business application. Over to you, Nishant. So right now, let us see uh, how the design patterns uh, will help us uh, design this whole uh, infra, uh, like architecture. So this design patterns will be very helpful uh, to reduce the cost as well as to improve the performance of our Azure serverless services. So we would highly recommend uh, all the solution architects and uh, uh, team uh, stakeholders who are all designing these Azure uh, serverless services to follow the integration design patterns. So the first design patterns we can uh, see is sequential convoy. So this sequential convoy uh, uh, will be very useful if you are uh, having some, uh, if you're having different types of requests coming in and uh, receiver needs to process all these different uh, types of uh, uh, requests individually. 
Um, let us see uh, this particular uh, diagrammatical representation here. That will be a sender and a receiver uh, who will be uh, having, uh, uh, like sender will be uh, sharing a lot of requests to the receiver. So in the typical scenario, like receiver has to validate all these requests and uh, prioritize uh, uh, the request based on uh, uh, based on the need. Uh, for example, if, if we take our uh, booking processing scenario, uh, there will be a lot of prime members and non-prime members uh, who will be opting for uh, our services. So we need to prioritize uh, the request coming from uh, the prime users. So uh, in, in that scenario, this, uh, like if we put all the load uh, uh, to the to the receiver completely, uh, it's it's going to be uh, like huge performance degrade. So uh, receiver, uh, you know, like we don't really need to put that much of load to the receiver to validate and process the message. So receiver has to do uh, their kind of services, either sending the email or generating the invoice, something like that. So with the help of this sequential convoy. Uh, we can reduce the load on the receiver by placing some service uh, in between the sender and receiver. So this service will, will be performing some validation. So in our case, we can see all these green packets as uh, the request from the prime user and all the blue packets can, uh, is coming from non-prime users. So this, uh, this message engine will be segregating all these requests and whenever the receiver want to Whenever receiver wants to uh, uh, receive the prime member packages uh, based on the priority, they can anytime receive it and do some further processing. So, what resources that we saw before uh, in the previous slide that we can use for this sequential convoy? So, we can achieve this with the help of Azure Service Pass. Azure Service Pass provides uh, the in house capability called sessioning. So, with the help of uh, sessions, uh, a uh, sender can differentiate the request uh, whether he is a prime uh, whether it is a prime request or non prime request uh, by placing some labels or something like that and uh, the service pass will automatically differentiate that with the name provided by sender and whenever receiver want to uh, receive uh, based on that label uh, they can very easily quickly retrieve the appropriate uh, request and process them so this will be considerably uh, reducing the load on the receiver so the second pattern we can see is publisher subscriber pattern. So uh, if you take our uh, flywheel cab booking application scenario again, uh, we will be having different requests coming in and validated, and some of the requests will be uh, rejected and some requests uh, will be accepted. So all these requests uh, requests will be processed for it. For example, accepted request will be uh, going to uh, invoice section and it may uh, send some notification to the users that the cab has been booked or something like that. And reject or request will be doing some further processing uh, uh, of its own. So here we are having different types of uh, requests that needs to be handled by different receiver. Again, we don't want to uh, uh, provide any load to our receiver on validating uh, uh, these requests, whether it is uh, rejected or whether it is accepted. So with the help of this publisher subscriber, we can segregate uh, 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 the request uh, based on the label. So there, here I'm having different types of requests, as you can see in this diagrammatical representation. So one can be accepted and another one can be rejected. So uh, all the rejected requests would be going to one subscription and uh, the, the relevant subscriber will subscribe it and do some further processing. And the, reject, and the rejected one will be going to another subscription and there will be another receiver uh, who will be actively looking into that subscription. So this will again considerably reduce uh, uh, the load that I'm putting on uh, receivers. So uh, again, I can use service bus. So service bus has uh, uh, different types of uh, 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 services, uh, like one is queues that we saw before in the sequential convoy. And second one is what we are seeing right now uh, topic. So this topic works based on the publisher subscriber model. So you can create uh, multiple subscriptions inside it and represent each and every subscription for uh, different types of messages. And uh, you can use filters to redirect the messages to appropriate subscriptions. And the third design pattern we are going to use is climb check. So when we are looking into climb check, uh, uh, this can be used in the vehicle telemetry application. 
uh, because consider uh, there are a lot of events generating uh, uh, from our caps going around uh, going around the cities like uh, those uh, events may have uh, uh, some uh, payloads as well so we cannot completely put all the payloads uh, to our on-premise system to process and uh, store them into database so we only want to uh, uh, like provide some kind of event so that will act act as an intimation to the uh, uh, on-premise server and whenever the time comes uh, uh, like on-premise system will automatically pick payloads from the data repository and do some further processing. So these are three design patterns that we will be following uh, in our application. So now let us see how we can uh, design this whole architecture. So right now uh, we are seeing uh, the architecture of this whole uh, vehicle telematics application and uh, booking processing application. So whenever a user uh, uh, books a cab through web application or mobile application, so those requests will be uh, uh, converted into a message and pushed to, to a service bus queue. So I can uh, utilize API management as well here. Uh, when it comes to API management, requests may uh, get lost because it's a HTTP stateless request. So if we want to uh, handle all these business uh, requests to be handled uh, properly, uh, we can utilize service pass to uh, store all the requests and uh, further logic apps and function app will be processing all these messages. So I'm having a logic app here, which is actively looking into my service pass. And whenever there is a request, it will share it with my function app, which is validating whether uh, the user is available or driver is available, uh, whether the location where the user resides in, uh, like we, we are providing some services to that location. So all these uh, will be handled with the help of uh, function apps. So, um, and once the function app shows the green signal, the messages will be pushed to uh, the topic for further processing. And if we look into the vehicle telematics, so we have uh, followed the climb check pattern here, as you can see, uh, there will be a lot of events ingesting some of our uh, caps. So all these events will be efficiently handled with help of event hubs. And there is a subscription which is actively looking into my event hub. And whenever there is an event, it will pull all, push all these events to my on-premise server as an intimation. And this on-premise system will quickly go to the storage blob and get all the necessary payload to store it back to my SQL server. So this kind of uh, vehicle telematics is also here. And we have uh, followed all these design patterns and we have used the Azure integration services to uh, uh, design this architecture. So now uh, let us see how we can build this whole application. So let us see that in action. Now. So right now we are in the Azure portal. So let me go to my uh, resource group, cab booking app. So here I'm going to create a logic app, uh, which is going to process all the messages. Let me type in logic app here. And I can create it now. So this logic app is going to process all my uh, booking messages. So I can name it as booking uh, process of dev. And I can review and create this logic app. So my logic app is getting deployed right now. Okay, so now let me get into uh, the logic app and designer view. Let us design our whole architecture here. So in my case, I'm going to uh, actively looking into my uh, service bus. So service bus will be handling the request uh, from my uh, web application. 
So I'm going to look into my service bus. And in my case, uh, I'm going to uh, autocomplete the message. So whenever there is a message coming in, so it will autocomplete and it will pick up the message for further processing. So let me select my queue, which is booking handler. And now I'm going to validate the message, whether it is a proper message and it has uh, uh, all the necessary details like user ID and driver ID, all these are correct. So everything will be checked with the help of a function app. So this function app is connected with the database, uh, uh, Azure SQL database behind the scene. So I'm choosing this validate booking details function app. So I'm having a couple of functions. Let us take one for now, this demonstration. So I'm taking valid validate driver details. So this function app is going to uh, validate the driver details in the message from a my service bus. So I'm uh, passing uh, properties here. So this property will be having some uh, custom properties with the message information. So I'm uh, validating it now. So based on my function apps uh, response, uh, I'm going to uh, perform further actions. So uh, I may send some, uh, I may send further requests to my invoice processing and send some notification to the users and drivers, or I may reject uh, uh, messages. Uh, I may reject those requests and send uh, appropriate messages to the customers. So I will be doing a couple of oper operations based on uh, the result coming in. So I'm going to use some uh, conditional operation here. And if the body is as true. So this true section is going to send a message to my uh, one of my topic. So in that topic, I'm having two subscription. So here we are, uh, as you can see, we are following up the publisher subscriber model. So I'm pushing that message to uh, uh, one of my topic, uh, you know, based on the label that I have provided, it may uh, go to the valid subscription or it may go to the invalid subscription and further downstream application will process all the messages based on uh, 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 the need. So I'm sending the message now. So I'm choosing the topic as data validator, which is going to validate and push the message to appropriate subscription. And to uh, differentiate my messages, I'm going to uh, define the label here. Say like if the label is going to true, then all the messages are valid one, or we can put something like uh, valid. And you know we can use the filters in Azure uh, uh, subscription to uh, uh, differentiate these messages. And I'm going to do very similar item in the false condition as well. I'm going to send a message. Uh, with the label as invalid. And here is the label. Invalid. So right now we are having our logic app ready and uh, uh, we can, you know, create further processing uh, after this, for the demonstration purpose, we have stopped uh, here to show you how we get, how we should architect this design. So we have followed the, uh, we have followed a couple of design patterns in this architecture, and uh, we will be following one another in the vehicle telemetry as well. So, so yeah, right now we have our booking processor ready, and whenever we execute uh, this, uh, whenever we, whenever the client application puts the message, this logic app will automatically. So to push the message, I'm going to serverless 360. So serverless 360 offers a capability to uh, push the message to my service bus with which I can test whether my service bus uh, are enabled or whether my uh, logic apps or you know all the resources connected to my service bus are working perfectly. So to, to completely test my environment, I can use this send the message automated task. So what I have defined here is I have defined a few custom properties with payload. So these information will be uh, sent to my service bus and logic app will process all this information. So now let me run uh, one of these automated tasks. So it's going to push uh, 
five messages. So we, we can see the uh, messages being processed here in the logic end. taking some time. Uh, Nishan, I don't hear you, Nishan. <laughs> Yes, a little. I'm not uh, speaking. I'm just. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah, no way. Hello. Yes, yes, Nishan, I can. Okay. Okay. Like, how long uh, could you hear me? Uh, last few seconds. The moment we came to the screen, I lost your voice. Okay. Okay, I think I was a bit silent here, so I think. Okay, okay, then so, so now we will be having a few records here, but uh, I think uh, we have to check into it. So let me show you one of my uh, staging environment right away. So here um, I can show you like this is how it will be. So based on the messages uh, uh, popping up, uh, I will be having few uh, records right away in my logic app. So this will give me all the uh, information from logic. From this, I can understand whether my uh, application runs successfully or not. So right now, uh, we have designed this application and uh, uh, we have executed it. And now let us see some best practices on uh, like what are all the best practices we should follow while creating this application along with uh, we saw design patterns and what are all some best services we can use. So apart from these, we, we, would, we should also follow a few best practices, other best practices as well. So let us uh, hear from Elil on uh, how we can uh, um, like uh, utilize those best practices. So dear participants, I hope you would have enjoyed the um, demonstration by Nishant and hope it was useful. So considering these, uh, we found that every single um, every single resource that we used in our application architecture had a significance in it. See, when I wanted to define my order processing workflow, Logic App was the right choice. It was listening to a service bus, which completely decoupled my web application from uh, the Logic App and i had the computations being fulfilled using an azure functions and event hub and event grid the event grid to um, pass on the uh, put the, like instead of letting my uh, client applications listen for messages to arrive in my queue i have an option to inform the client application whenever the message has arrived so such critical a needs can be fulfilled with the help of event grids seamlessly. So event grid can pass on an event from any service to any other service. And APIM can sit as an another layer on my logic app to, to add help me add policies for uh, access restriction or um, sec adding security layers to my logic app can be facilitated with the help of APIMs. So depending on this understanding, which are all the uh, resources do you, in the list do you find to have a key role in your business architecture? This is what we would like to understand because as Nishant rightly mentioned, Serverless 360 is an tool that's designed to complement the Azure portal to help you better deal with these Azure resources. So this, uh, your input can help us bring out a number of intuitive features that can help you meet the operational requirements while dealing with these uh, resources in real time. So I can find almost all the participants. 
have uh, submitted their response. That's great. Thank you for your response. Let's get back to the presentation now. So we'll come back to the Q&A session once we are done with the best practice segment of this. So I had been answering as Nishant was presenting. Let's get back to the Q&A as soon as the best practice is done. So as we observed, so uh, Azure services indeed help us build real-time applications uh, much uh, efficiently at much easier way. Uh, but we need to uh, concentrate on certain factors on all phases of this application development, right from your innovation phase. When you identify a business need, when you identify a service to fit into the business need, and then as the design proceeds and as you build the application, and even after build and deployment, um, how do I support it in production? So all these phases, we need to stick on to certain best practices. And there are tips and tricks that can help us better deal with these business applications in production. So stick on to integration design patterns. So uh, Microsoft has itself defined integration design patterns that would help us better utilize or uh, rightly design our business application so that uh, they are the best out of the Azure services are consumed. You have Azure Advisor as a part of the Azure portal itself. So in the Azure Advisor, you get recommendations in your various categories like you can get to understand the security recommendations performance recommendations um <clears throat> and various category cost recommendations and adhering to these recommendations can help you build and write solution can sticking on to the industry standards uh, you have when it comes to deployment uh, utilize azure devops it has a wonderful tool set that can help you automatically deploy updates or uh, redeployment of your complete business application can be facilitated with the help of DevOps um, definitions. Continuous monitoring is critical. So our responsibility to our customers would begin as your application gets into the production, after which it is critical to monitor the business application for any unforeseen um, complications and react into it. So Azure, uh, ensures as with an uh, availability of 99.95 percentage but still there could be scenarios wherein there, it was assumed to be 4.5 hours per year right so we cannot even afford uh, that downtime when it comes to the real-time business apart from the downtime there could be a number of cases that needs our attention say an unauthorized access to your function app needs to be addressed or investigated any failure in logic app needs to be acted on any dead letter messages in your queue might mean that your customer order is going and processed so all these operational requirements needs to be addressed identified and addressed so Azure itself Azure portal does offer solutions that can help you detect these failures. You have Azure Monitor, you have uh, application insights for uh, web apps and function apps, and you have Azure Monitor that can help you monitor resources on their metrics. So you have dashboards that can help you understand how your resources are performing. But when it comes to the application level of monitoring, there is still a scope for improvement in the Azure portal. But that is a gap that a tool like Serverless 360 will address. You get an application level of monitoring and you get to um, track end to end uh, the message flow through various components of your business application. You get to and uh, tackle your real-time operational needs with the help of tool sets like dead letter processing or um, logic app resubmission processing with the help of tool like serverless 360. And make sure you use the Azure backup um, so that you, you do not lose any of your information. You always have a backup to uh, go back with. 
so outer scaling is critical like one of the key reasons why organizations choose to adapt to cloud is an scaling requirement so enable auto scaling so that your um, application scale seamlessly without any manual intervention last but not the least focus on the security Azure Security Center is a wonderful platform that can help you our applications comply, uh, be compliant with industry standards of uh, security expectations along with that always have uh, the security alerts enabled and listen or address to them as and when they pop up. See here are some references to uh, good interesting reads on the uh, architecture and patterns guide. And as I was mentioning, so Serverless 360 is one tool that can fulfill the needs of your operations and support team. So what would my operations and support team need? So as we were dealing with resources in the Azure portal, but what an operations team would need is an application view. So we need to view the applications as a group of resources that could be spread across resource groups or, or subscriptions. I need to manage them as business applications. And day in and day out, my business would demand uh, me to process the dead letter messages or resubmit my logic app runs, which are operational requirements. I do not find straightforward solutions in the Azure portal to fulfill these needs, but I have the complete tool set that would be required by my operations team to reprocess the dead letters or restore the failures in Serverless 360. Consolidated monitoring would be a critical requirement. As an application, what happens to my logic app? If my logic app status is disabled due to various reasons, this would impact the messages that get into my queue because the logic app is listening to my queue and if the messages are not processed, they are going to get dead lettered, which literally means I have few orders that are unprocessed. So this monitoring is critical and that can be achieved along with end-to-end -end tracking. That is in our application architecture, we found the message to flow through a web app, then through a logic app, and then to an Azure function. So um, my need would be to understand where did my business fail? Where did the message get struck? That can be achieved at ease with the help of this end-to-end -end tracking. And need for better documentation uh, and auditing is, of course, there in all the business. So you can find um, and like tailor-made tools to fulfill all these needs of operations and supporting in the form of serverless 360. Thank you, Lil. Uh, let me go to the uh, serverless 360 portal and show how we can achieve all these needs uh, with the help of serverless 360. So when Elil was speaking about uh, the needs for operations and support people, the first and foremost need uh, would be on application visibility. So if you look into Azure portal, uh, Azure portal offers you the resource groups capability, but the limitations with the resource groups would be uh, 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 only on the resource group level. It, it doesn't offer any hierarchy and we cannot create different types of applications uh, with that. It's just for a grouping purpose. Uh, but in real time, we will be having different applications and sub applications and all these applications will be sharing different uh, resources in real time. So we, we want to group them all accordingly. So that can be achieved with the help of composite applications in serverless resources. Um, is a kind of uh, have different hierarchies and you can represent your applications uh, uh, right away. So these uh, uh, applications uh, we can even uh, restrict the access for different uh, set of users. Uh, for example, if you see here, I'm having a dev production and staging. Uh, for some developers, I can uh, provide access on dev environment, and for testing people, I can only provide on staging environment. So this kind of user management is also uh, uh, provided in Server Industry 16. So as you can see here, I can understand uh, uh, there are a couple of my applications which are in failed state, so I can only focus on uh, that application so all these are not 
at all possible in uh, Azure portal. So if I show you the user management part, here we can create uh, some custom role and we can uh, uh, even pull in all of our Active Directory users right away and uh, uh, say something like, uh, there are some uh, testing people that we want to provide only on staging environment. We can only choose all the staging environment here and we can restrict the access uh, 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 as read only or manage and in operation and monitoring level. So all these kind of granular level user access policy uh, is available in Serverless 360. And when you can, when we continue on the needs part, the second for most needs uh, 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 that most of the operation support people would have is uh, the operational capabilities. Uh, say like if, if there are if there is a support person uh, who would want to process all the failed booking messages and their uh, downstream application are uh, getting failed. So they would be continuously uh, receiving the support tickets from their customers. They have to quickly uh, react to that problem. So here in Serverless 360, any support person can uh, go to the appropriate queues or topics where they are facing the issue and they can understand uh, whether the messages are being stagnated uh, in, in their topics or subscription. So in, in my case, if you see here, I'm, I'm in the staging booking management and in one of my topic, I'm having uh, uh, the messages being stagnated due to some failure with my downstream application. So it's 4,000 4, messages there. So I have to quickly uh, reprocess it to my backup queue for further processing. So now let us see how we can do that in Serverless 360. So we have to get into the subscription or queue and we can retrieve the dead letter messages. So if we want to understand uh, what is the actual problem uh, with the messages, we can even understand them. So here it is time to live expired reason. So which shows me that there, is, there might be some issue with my uh, downstream application, which caused these messages to uh, get dead letter. So I can understand the problem now. And I also want to reprocess these messages back to uh, uh, my original queue or my backup queue. So I can either resubmit it. So in, in some cases, we also want to uh, uh, repair and resubmit the message. Say like we want to edit some of the content and uh, we want to add some uh, user properties here. Say like uh, this message is a resubmitted one. So we can put like uh, resubmitted as true. So from this, uh, our uh, client application or backup service can understand this message is a, a resubmitted one. And the next page, I can choose the destination, whether it can be a queue or topic, and I can proceed with the reprocessing. So this kind of message processing or very critical uh, need for operation support people in real time business, because uh, uh, they don't really you know, need to wait for uh, different approvals. They have to quickly react to this problem. Uh, uh, they have, if there are some backup system, they want to quickly reprocess to that. So this will be very helpful uh, on that kind of uh, situations. So right now I have retrieved uh, 10 messages and I'm doing some processing with that. Consider if there are thousands of uh, messages are uh, getting stagnated, I cannot do them all manually here. So with the help of automated task in serverless 360, we can achieve that easily. So this automated task is a, a, a set of rules defined and uh, it is a scheduled automated task. So whenever the time comes, it will automatically get triggered and it will do the operations that we have defined. See like uh, if I show you with this particular automated task, so this is going to purge all my unwanted deleted messages. So I can define automated task either to purge my messages or uh, at the end of the day, if I want to uh, reprocess all my message back to one of another backup queue, I can even choose for that option as well. And I can even filter the dead letter messages based on uh, the uh, dead letter reason. So this kind of options are available. And the next great option is scheduling. So you can schedule these messages, uh, schedule this automated task to trigger whenever it's, whenever it's needed to trigger. This kind of and the third and third most need would be on uh, the consolidated monitoring part. So we have the operational capabilities and grouping, and uh, there will also be a need a proactive monitoring 
uh, uh, needs for sub operation supporting. So here we are having monitors to satisfy that need as well. So in serverless 360, we offer five different types of uh, monitors, which will be useful for uh, different stakeholders. Uh, say consider like uh, we want to monitor the incoming messages with outgoing messages. I want to monitor the rate. So if, if the outgoing message are a bit low than the incoming messages, I can understand there might be some issue. So I would want to monitor them. So here with the help of a data monitor, we can uh, achieve that. And um, it also offers you uh, to monitor server errors and user errors. So all these kind of errors will be occurring on your client application. So this will intimate me there is some issue with my client app and I have to go and look into it. So this proactive reports will help me understand the problem and quickly react to the issue. So yeah, if I show you in one of my uh, queue here, so we will be having different set of uh, metrics available for us to monitor. Uh, we can monitor on the dead letter message count, as well as, as I mentioned, we can monitor the incoming messages with outgoing messages. So this kind of cross metric uh, comparison is also available. And one great part about uh, the serverless 360 monitors are uh, you can even monitor uh, uh, different types of Azure resources with single monitor. But if you look into alerts and you know monitors offered by Azure, you cannot really do it. So if you have thousands of resources, you will end up with thousands of alerts. So that's a huge uh, task that uh, operation support team has to do. But here it's it's completely optimized. It's in the consolidated uh, application level of uh, monitoring. And the third most need after monitoring would be the end-to-end -end tracking. So uh, like being as a decoupled services and you know. Uh, services that are running in the cloud, um, all are you know, completely decoupled. So we want to understand uh, where the message is actually right now. And we, there might be multiple transactions we can understand, but we cannot completely view them uh, through Azure portal. So we can we can solve that problem with the help of uh, BAM and serverless 360. So this BAM provides you end-to-end -end tracking of your uh, whole application. Uh, your, your application may contain logic app and function app. So in our, in our uh, flywheel caps, we are having different types of uh, resources decoupled, right? So we can track them all uh, right away here. So here, if you see, I'm having uh, multiple transactions. So if I click on uh, one of my transaction, I'm having uh, the diagrammatical representation of my whole integration. And this shows me where is the actual problem. And it, it's also giving me some exception details to investigate. Uh, further. In some cases, we would also want to look into the message uh, that is flowing through each and every stage. So we can retrieve the message and we can uh, even look into the headers. And it also offers me to track some uh, uh, custom business critical properties like user ID and driver ID and location, all these kind of things. So with the help of these properties, we can even use them to uh, query all of our transaction. We can use them to monitor and create some dashboards. So this kind of end-to-end uh, -end tracking is possible uh, here in Server 360. And the last need would be on uh, the better documentation and uh, uh, governance and uh, auditing capabilities. So Serverless 360 do offer uh, auditing capabilities here. Uh, as you can see here, uh, we can understand uh, who did the activity and what activity has been done what resource that activity has been done. And if you want to look deeper, we can right away click on that activity and we can see what are all the properties that have been changed uh, on this activity. This kind of auditing is also available. And we have recently launched uh, one more great capability called uh, CloudDocs. This CloudDocs is a, a complete a documentation feature for your Azure subscriptions. So uh, I can the executive share and understand more on uh, billings and uh, uh, like where you're uh, spending a lot of your money. So everything will be uh, completely documented month on month, and it will be uh, given it as, as a report. Yeah. So as you can see here, we can understand everything uh, from a single place. So these are uh, uh, five great pillar capabilities that we have. 
and we can achieve all the five uh, common needs for operation and support team uh, with the help of all these uh, capabilities. So, so if you really want to check out uh, more about uh, Serverless 360, you can go to uh, you, 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 you can go to Serverless 360 slash sign up and then for 15 days free trial. So there you can try out all the capabilities of Serverless 360 and. Uh, you can opt for, uh, you know, uh, higher other versions uh, if you want to go for that. And if you want to know more about Serverless 360, you can uh, follow all these blogs and the white papers and ebooks. And we are also uh, uh, like regularly releasing the YouTube videos, uh, uh, which are, uh, you know, more specific, specific about challenges that uh, uh, like integration solution architects face on all these Azure services. So uh, you can check out our YouTube channel as well. So apart from Serverless 360, uh, you know, if you look into the blocks of Serverless 360, they will be uh, uh, like showing you all the relevant contents uh, regarding the Azure integration space. But if you want to know more about what's going to come and what are all the new uh, things are going to happen in the integration space. Uh, you can come and attend Integrate 2021, uh, which is uh, our flagship event, where you know, uh, 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 like all the integration experts from all around the world and the Microsoft integration team will be coming and sharing their uh, uh, roadmap of Microsoft integration technologies. So you can go to bestock360.com/integrate2021remote uh, uh, for the registration. And uh, like apart from this webinar, like uh, we usually conduct all these webinars uh, month on month. Um, like you know, like uh, like I was showing you the business activity monitoring capability. So if you want to know uh, more about uh, how this uh, you know BAM capability works in real time, uh, you can uh, you know like check out this uh, uh, one of the previous webinar from uh, Microsoft and Michael Stevenson. So that will give you a lot of insights about BAM capabilities. And if you are a support person and want to uh, um, uh, like know how serverless 360 can support you, uh, you can check out our previous webinar. Uh, so that will give you a lot of insights again. So you can go to serverless360.com slash webinar to get all the video recordings and presentations for this webinars. And uh, apart from webinars, we will be also conducting some community initiatives month on month as well as week in weekly wise as well. So in serverless nodes, uh, which is one of our community in initiative where you can find uh, some technical uh, content related to Azure integration services. And we also uh, have integration playbook and integration Monday and middle of Friday. So that in this couple of uh, 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 initiatives we will be posting uh, weekly uh, sessions on integration space that you can uh, come and sharpen your uh, integration knowledge as well you know like thank you so much for uh, your feedbacks and uh, yeah like please follow us uh, we will be having a lot more more webinars coming thank you so much kobe.co